Have you ever experienced something so crippling in your life that has made you feel broken? I have. Are you someone who has a giving heart but is struggling to feel good themselves? Are you consistently putting your needs aside to take care of everyone else? If so, you're not alone. Giving starts with giving to yourself so that you are able to give of yourself to other people. Isn't it time you took back control and discovered what makes you tick? Join me in my journey and find out how you can feel better about yourself, live your best life, and share that with others. Thinking of yourself, it doesn't make you selfish. It makes you brave. I'm Nelia, and this is the Giving Starts With You podcast. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Giving Starts With You podcast. Thank you so much for returning again for another episode. You know, I have met the most incredible people, and I know I have said this before, but it's incredible how you can meet somebody and within minutes of meeting them, you know that, you know, we're all a lot more similar than you think we are. You know, the world is a smaller place and that we think, and people are just amazing. And and, you know, I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Tiffany Wynn. How are you today? Great. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. Thank you for coming. And you're one of those people, you know, we've been speaking just for a little while. And like you said, I feel like we're so connected. I'm so excited that you're here. I just want to dive right in. I'm going to introduce you so everybody knows a little bit about who you are. So Dr. Wynn is a spiritual life coach who helps busy professionals and sensitive high achievers reconnect with their truths, and live authentically. I love this so much. She combines practicality and spiritual wisdom to guide people towards clarity and confidence in who they are, leading them to inner peace and happiness. With her analytical brain and her intuitive tarot reading skills, Tiffany brings a unique approach to one's self-transformational journey. Oh my goodness, this is like talking to me directly and, and my audience. Uh, Tiffany immigrated to the U.S. when she was just 16, and she quickly learned the harsh reality of being alone in a foreign country. She faced the greatest fear, loneliness. As the years went by, she grew tired of chasing the next thing and feeling lost, and decided to look within. She created the happiness blueprint to illustrate how people can build a fulfilling life for themselves. She holds a doctor of pharmacy and is a student of Tibetan meditation master, Yongi Minyar Jimpoche. Thank you so much. Um, her articles have appeared on Elephant Journal, Thrive Global, Purpose Fairly, and McGill, Me- Me- Mc- sorry, McGill Media. She's been featured in the spiritual podcast, Unfuck Your Mind. Welcome to the show. So happy to see you. Thank you. Thank you, Nelia. <laughs> you know, it's just, I don't know. Well, why don't we start by talking about where you're tuning in from today? Where are you at? So I am from Tampa Bay area in Florida. Uh, supposed to be the sunshine state, but it's <laughs> gloomy today, it's raining all day, which is good for sleeping for me. But, but I'm yes. welcome for this podcast. What's been with the weather? It's been raining here for like days and days, but you know what? There's nothing but sunshine right now because we've met each other. You know, you've got this beautiful glow about you and I'm just, I know that you're going to help our audience. So I'm so happy. Um, Do you want to just tell us like a little bit about your journey and um, just about who you are? Yeah. So um, I'm uh, currently a doctor of pharmacy. So I work as a pharmacist and I am also a spiritual life coach. And it's, um, so my journey, it doesn't have like a, a quick awakening, like a new dead experience, anything like that. It's much more gradual. Um, so it's all really started with what people would usually call like dark night of the soul. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think people should start naming it like dark decade of the soul because it doesn't last one night. <laughs> it lasts for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, but so it started out when I immigrated to the U.S. at the age of 16 by myself. Um, it wasn't the, the fact of immigrating to the U.S. is not strange. It's actually very common for a developing country um, like Vietnam uh, because we 
usually a lot of uh, students who have very good academic uh, result and if their family is kind of middle class, uh, they can usually try to, everybody aspire to try to uh, send their children to like developed country mm -hmm. in Europe or America for higher education because the, the degree is much more valuable. So we should like set off for, you know, it's like a base for the children to break the poverty cycle and then to go to okay. new heights. So for the family. And also education is like one of the most important in Asia. So it's like, there's a lot of pressure for people to just send their children. Um, so the fact that I immigrated to the US wasn't like uh, uncommon okay. as well. Um, but it was, I guess I wasn't very unprepared for it. It was like, I didn't know. It was, yeah. I had never traveled outside of Vietnam at the time. Wow. I never traveled without my family or anything like that. Um, we didn't have a lot of money, so I, we never really traveled out of the country or even out of the region even. So, um, so that was the first time. Um, so I took like my family saving and then just come to the US um, by myself and it was terrifying I didn't know the language I didn't know the culture either um, I, w I was actually so shocked that I got the visa to go to the US I'm like why I don't speak English but like, okay why um, so it was I guess it's part of destiny so I came over and one of my greatest fear is actually loneliness um, I even though I'm an introvert but I'm also kind of like uh, extroverted once I in like the group of people that I know like I'm very extroverted like people wouldn't would never be able to tell I'm introvert so <laughs> but deep down I'm an introvert like I don't just make friends like it's not my personality <laughs> yes and you can be both yeah yeah so it's like you can it's like ambivert so I think like yeah like if I just met somebody strange I would never initiate a conversation but um if I know somebody then i am totally become this crazy extrovert <laughs> so so that's just my personality um but sorry anybody in your position would have felt terrified so you came as a foreign exchange student yes yes um and then it was terrifying. And then, so my mom sent me over. I had like an aunt that I actually never met <laughs> in the US. So I came to stay with her. And then it was a, it was a terrible reality to find out that we don't get along. <laughs> we met oh, no. was a very, very flash, like heavily. And um, her husband also not Vietnamese. So there's a lot of like cultural clash in the household and it's a very high conflict household. Like there's fight every day. I don't like, oh my and God. Teenager, being a teenager and all these. And I think I totally skipped the rebellious teenager. I didn't have time for that. I should go straight to the depressing, <laughs> getting to an adult stage. Um, so yeah, so I had no way to avoid my loneliness at that time. Um, it was just like all crashing down on me. And it was a very isolating experience. Um, when I went to school, nobody understood me. So they thought, in, initially they thought I was mute and deaf because I couldn't speak. Cause I, and I didn't, I, could, I couldn't understand either. So I really, I really have nothing to say. Um, and then, um, but you know, like even in those dark times, and I really couldn't recognize that at the time, but I really appreciate those kindness that people show me in those dark times. Mm -hmm. um, so usually my math teacher, that I really appreciated him. Um, is one of the good thing about math is uh, I don't have to speak English. <laughs> That's so true, yes. And, um, Music. and it, was, it, was, uh, it was, I really appreciated his kindness because he didn't, looked out on me and uh, he actually yeah very encouraging um but other than that uh so like school not like math I have like some one of the bright point but everything else was really dark and it was just the loneliness was really crippling it was like I remember um I prayed just to like I prayed to get like into a car accident and just like not waking up the next day because it was so terrible. Um, it's got to the point that I like attempted to suicide because it was so terrible. Um, so the only way that I cope with it 
is um, I got into a lot of relationship with people that I shouldn't be in, the people that I didn't really feel connected to, but I just didn't want to be alone. And it was just, it was just started from there. And um, so years later, uh, life started to get better. Like I got into university and um, started to get my life together and I started going to work. And those uh, really like developing this kind of social network and not so isolating and also have like a goal for the future really helped me like put my mind into sort of more healthier focus. And that moved me out of that kind of dark night of the soul thing. Um, the bad thing was, by the time I get out of, of that kind of experience, um, I completely lost myself. I really hated myself. Uh, but also as a high achiever, I tend to just suppress mm. everything that I don't want to deal with and just go forward and just kind of forget about it, just push it down and swoop it under the rug and just don't think about it. Um, and that didn't really come out, come to head until um, I moved to Florida for my pharmacy school and everything you know it seems great on the outside like I have a career going on I have a job so um I have a career look like it's good and then I got engaged with a nice good guy and uh it was all coming good but until what but until one of those days um it was just a very normal day nothing major uh, I was like lounging with my friend, uh, best friend at the time. And she would just mention like offhand comment, like she wished she had a relationship like mine because she's older than me and she was still single. Right. We all think that it's greener on the other yeah, side. Like, yeah, like you're so great. I'm like, uh, and you know, I'm the type of person like I'm a little bit dramatic in my inner circle. So like when I was out with my um, band fiance, it was like very like, lovey-dovey. So everybody was like, oh my God, it's so romantic. And it was so good. Um, but I was like, you know, because we best friends. So I would just look at her like, I don't know what you want in this relationship. <laughs> it's not that great. It's so much work. I was like, I don't know even know I want to get married. And then she would look at me like, what do you mean? Like, is something wrong? And then um, it was that beautiful, vulnerable moment that I just kind of like broke down. Um, maybe because of like tons of exams that we just been going through, which is very rigorous. And I was just like, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe I haven't cold feet. <laughs> I don't really want to, to continue this. Like, I don't really like to live this way for the rest of my life. I was just actually very miserable, but I just... I just feel like I have to do everything to earn whatever little happiness I am. Mm -hmm. um, and then I confess with her about my painful past, about these relationships I got into. And I feel like I'm just waiting for karma to kick me in the ass to just like, you know, waiting for the other shoe to drop. Like, you know, something's gonna happen and I'm gonna get all the things that I deserve, which is my totally bad thing because I'm a terrible being. Um, so, it's that kind of like meltdown also um, have the very wonderful ending. She, my best friend also opened up and be vulnerable. And she told me her past, which is kind of similar also. And then what stick with me, it wasn't my experience or her experience. It was, we were both adamant about the other that mm -hmm. we deserve happiness, even though we can't believe it. You know, like we ourselves can believe it. It's funny but how we need the someone. other person. Yes. It's funny how we need to hear it from somebody else. You know, there's so many things you said there. First of all, I'm really sorry. I'm sorry that, you know, you had to go through that by yourself. Um, I remember looking back when I was 16, I was trying to think of when you were describing how I would have felt, you know, and I did not have the same experience you had, but still at 16, Still, even, I, I knew the language and I didn't have that many, you know, challenges ahead of me, but still high school was tough. Still being 16 was hard. Still sh knowing how you feel and add everything, the language and everything that you dealt with. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. And I know that you've learned so much from that and it's made you strong and you're obviously very, very bright. And I'm so happy that you had that math teacher, you know, and I just wanted to say when you said, you know, when you said about 
sometimes on the outside, we want to make everything look good so we can, you know, in a way. But do you agree that when we are alone and we're, we finish that moment of being outside, that it just makes us feel even worse that we had to play this role? Because yeah. I know that I have felt that myself, like, you know, you try to, um, like you play it up during the week and then the weekend when you're not at work and you don't have to worry about anything or anybody knowing about your life, then you can really be as sad as you want. You can be, feel all those things, but it makes you feel even more sad because what you're portraying is not true. Is, yes, absolutely. And the truth will always come out. It just like, it just like the sun, no matter how long the storm gonna take, the, the sun will always come out. And that is just like the truth, like right? the truth of you will always come out. And if you're miserable, it will always come out like fuck you miserable. Um, so yeah, during those times, even when I try my best um, to be in, you know, like all kind of relationship and not being alone, there's that time when I was alone and it was just like absolutely terrible. I would just like wallow in tears and it was just like, so, uh, I can't wait for the next time. Um, so when I, when during my pharmacy school, I was, I don't know, I was clever enough to the point that I schedule my, um, I start my schedule to the point that there is no alone time unless I'm like showered or, you know, like, bathroom but like absolutely no a lot of time um so if i'm not at work if i'm not studying and uh, then i'll be at home or spending time with my then fiance which is like zero long time to try to eliminate that right um, which isn't healthy either <laughs> no definitely not but like i think like no matter how clever we think we are and just how we do oh, with yeah. our try everything and anything uh, just, yeah. we cannot run away from ourselves and that's just like a painful another painful truth like we can never run away from ourselves and that's one of those things like no matter it, those are just like a band-aid you know you stick it on and it's like a facial mask you know eventually it's gonna fall apart and uh, but deep down you're just feeling miserable and it's gonna leak out because no matter how much I kind of model it at the time but eventually, the, the longer it went, um, those misery leaking out uh, is always leak out. Like I tend to like snap at people. <laughs> so like whether at work or at school or uh, with my then fiance, like even like silly thing, even a very small thing. But like I would, my patient was like, it's not great to begin with, but when you bottle a lot of emotion, sometimes you just snap at it. Like in this moment, you just leak out. And then it was, it's also another thing that when we kind of like suppress something for so long and we keep telling ourselves we're fine and we in denial for so long, there's another thing come up. Like uh, we believe those kind of lies when we tell ourselves long enough. Um, but then we feel miserable. And then I have, I was very lost. Like I was very confused. I'm like, I don't know why I was miserable. And I was even more miserable because like I felt guilty for not being happy because I felt like I checked all the boxes mm. and I don't know why I was unhappy with my relationship when there was nothing wrong. And I was feeling guilty for not being happy with them. And, you know, so I just, I just <laughs> want to hug you right now because honestly, I'm getting teary eyed because our stories are so different, but I know what it feels like to suppress your feeling. And you were talking about how it's a decade and it took me 12 years too. And it doesn't matter what the story is in a way, it's how it feels for you. And during that time, you were talking about how you, you began to hate yourself and all these things. And you know, that's one of my messages all the time is don't do what I did. Don't suppress your feelings. You know, at the moment you think it's your, it's a way to cope. You try everything. You know, you try talking about it, you feel worse. You try hiding from it, you feel worse. But, you know, you think you're protecting yourself when you don't talk about it. But I'm so happy you're here talking, you know, and, and you're brave and and you're so strong to talk to us about it because I know how much it hurts. 
Yeah. And especially the longer it went, the more confused I got because I, I completely forgot who I was. And I was also confused on like, why, what's wrong with me? You know, like why I'm not happy. Mm. Um, and then the truth of the matter was because I hated myself. And um, so it took that conversation with my best friend. And then a few months later, this simple decision, this epiphany, um, that was just like, if I switched place with my best friend and if she did all of the things that I did, I would never, ever think less of her. And it took that um, Mm. epiphany to for me to actually forgive myself and that was actually what kicked off my whole inner health healing it was self-forgiveness um so everybody that if you know feeling the same way about you know unworthy and loneliness um i want you to do that simple exercise if you swap the most pressured person in your life or you know someone that you feel very connected with, either your children or your parent or your best friend. Um, if you swap place, if they did the exact same thing you did, if they went through the exact same scenario you did, would you ever think anything less of them? Would they be ever less amazing in your eyes? And the answer will undoubtedly no. You would be um, a lot more kinder to yourself for sure. Yeah. So that realize that we are always, always so hard on ourselves, like so harsh. And um, so we can, you know, self-forgiveness is a big thing. And it's not like, it's not in, and it took me a really long time to understood um, that self-forgiveness is not about forgetting the past. It's not about like, just like acknowledging the past and then forget it and move on. Right. But it's really about that accepting that, okay, I made a mistake, but I am not the same person that I was even yesterday. So, mm-hmm. and it's totally okay to change. And, um, and that uh, amazingly, like once I start going on to that inner journey, um, I realized I really have no idea who I was anymore. Um, so I got back to reconnecting with ourselves. Um, so when do you even start, like when you go through all of that, how do you even start your journey, you know, to finding love and peace? Yeah. So it started out with self-forgiveness and it was like an overnight effect. Like literally like the next day, like the burden was like lifted off. Like I don't have to like, it's like the hate, like really like the hate, <laughs> the, my self-hatred was like really less because I forgive my mistake. I'm like, okay, I didn't know what I knew now. So, um, so that what really took the burden off. That gave me the courage to actually face my own reality that I wasn't happy and have to really be honest with myself. Like, what's to, what, what do I actually want? What's aligned with me and whatnot? Um, so I continued my career, uh, finished my schooling. I broke off the engagement um, because it was just not working. Even though nothing was wrong with the relationship, but it was just, it wasn't right for me. And it was very cliche, but it was very true. Like, it wasn't you, it was me. It was totally me. And um, um, not the back of the guy, but hey, we all make mistakes. So <laughs> count it on. Um, and so that's when I started the journey of reconnecting myself like, with uh, who I am. So it would just start with something simple, like, what do I like? Uh, you know, like, what? Um, what are our fears, hope, and dreams, and um, and then you know synchronicity start to happen. So like after that, in the few months later, I stumble. I always want to learn meditation because that helped calming the mind. And my mind is like madness, chaos. <laughs> <laughs> it was like oh my god. So I tried meditate for like three years, and I always fell because I was like every time I start, I just fall straight to sleep. It was just like not working. Um, and I even read like books of Eckhart Tolle and Dao Lao. It was very dry for me at the time. I just didn't get it. So I just also fell asleep reading those. So I was like, okay, maybe I'm just not, you know, it just was not for me. Um, but the funny thing is when I actually start that really that inner journey of reconnecting with ourselves, I stumbled upon my teacher and he, his teaching is pretty much the same with a lot of guru, but uh, it's, for some reason, like the style resonated with me. 
I follow him. They delivered it. Yeah. 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 And he, you know, I took classes with him and then I went on retreat um, and then go followed up that route. And so that really helped me to understand more about like a broader perspective, like, um, because from my culture, like karma is a really big thing. Mm. And it was just like, oh my, yeah. and I think like we all have that kind of notion, you know, like what goes around comes around. So yeah. I felt like if I did something bad in my past, I was like, okay, let, let me pay it. Like, I, I just want to get it out of the way. And I was just like getting ready to pay off for my dad, you know, like, um, but the more I learned about it, it was really about our own self evolution, about our own soul lesson. So it's not about like, if you steal from someone, you're gonna get something got stolen from you and you know, like tit for tat, cat or karma. Yes. <laughs> um, sometimes it can be like that, you know, that's kind of like simple scenario to, to teach children, you know, kind of for moral. Right. Um, but it's not, it's not what karma is about. And the more I learned about it, I'm like, oh, okay. So I guess I, you know, like, I kind of, you know, like breathe of Hassan relief. Um, so that's how I, you know, going down like meditation and exploring more like about uh, my Buddhist principle because, you know, we're Buddhist. And so I, I wasn't Buddhist, but after following my teacher, I became a Buddhist. So, so, so that's how a lot of like uh, spiritual wisdom came from uh, Buddhist principle. And meditation um so that was good and it took uh so pharmacist is actually a very stressful job um you work in the healthcare healthcare field so you know like healthcare field is like completely madness um so in the u.s pharmacy is one of the top 10 profession of high uh, suicide rate because oh i didn't know that yeah it's a very stressful mm -hmm. one um, so at the time, I was looking to find a better uh, job to have better work-life balance. And <clears throat> I also sponsored my mom from Vietnam to here at the time. Oh, okay. And, and uh, while that sounds great, it wasn't great when I had my freedom for 10 years for so long. And then my mom came over and then I, oh my God, I cannot deal with having another person in my house. So it was like comedy. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny that you say that my best friend um sponsored uh, a, a, gr a girl from vietnam uh she was 15 at the time and she has her in her home as a foreign exchange student she's now 24 and her mom came to visit and she's like okay i can't wait for her to go <laughs> because because they're not you know it's exactly what you're saying because they don't really know each other either and it's like oh yeah it's dependent now yeah and it's really different and also you know also in uh asian culture like the worst thing you can commit would be you know disobedient yes. to your parents that's very 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 bad so there's a lot of stress and chaos in my life at that time both at work and in the family life but amidst of all of that oh, this, this is to how like I think a lot of the healing journey, so it's always a, a spiral journey. So it's always go deeper and sometimes you get triggered again, even years later. Um, but usually a lot of thing about healing journey is like, uh, you don't see the effect of it until you look back. So it was one of those moments. So true. So, true. so it was like, when I was like, oh my God, I'm like stressful at my job. I'm trying to find another job. And I stress what the house was so we got fighting with my mom all the time. And then, <clears throat> and uh, during, during that chaos, there was just sense of peace that I felt. And even though the chaos, you know, like argument or whatever, like I don't feel like I got swept into it. Like my mom also have dramatic. So I probably got the, all these dramatic streak from her, but like, she was like, like one two, great, drama queen of like fencing and all that. Okay, this is, this is too much. Then you but, took a breath. Uh, yeah, but like, you know, just, just step back a little and don't get swept into it. Like don't get into like, a, lot, a lot of these anger issue. Um, so it's a time that it's like, it's almost palpable. That inner feel is almost palpable that you can feel it, you can touch it. Um, so I realized that was very, that's not very common, uh, uh, especially, especially um, I knew some of my classmates, my colleague um, didn't make it. So they, one of the statistics 
that. Oh, I'm so sorry. On the job. So it was like, I realized that those kind of inner peace feeling is not common at all. Um, and I wish everybody to feel it. Uh, so that's how I started out to actually be a spiritual life coach or mentor to actually help people reconnect with themselves. Um, because I feel like there's so much mainstream. No, you know what it feels like to not have. Yeah. And also it's just so much crap on the mainstream. It was like, find yourself. Like you don't find yourself. You just, you know, lost, we just lost ourselves on the way. Life is tough, you know, like there's a lot of life challenges thrown at us. We just have to reconnect, like just go back to us. But because we went through a lot of like tough trauma in our life, we just build a lot of layers of armors. So we just have to need somebody to help peeling those off. Um, yeah. And so that's how I help people with that. So I recognize that one of my superpowers would actually spot people with thought patterns. So when people are telling me, <clears throat> let's say their circumstances and their behavior, I was able to spot like, okay, you behave that way because you were thinking this way. Mm -hmm. And that was a pattern you have because yeah. of something that you experienced before. And so when, when they have that kind of clarity of the pattern, like, oh, okay, well, I don't want to think that way. So like, yeah, then we can just shift it. Mm -hmm. We have the power to change our own thoughts, you know? We don't have to let it rule us, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so of course we are all emotional beings, human are all emotional beings. So our emotions fuels a lot of our judgments, you know, a lot of our thoughts, but feelings can be deceiving. Um, just like if anybody read Harry Potter, like I yes. used to read Harry Potter, just one thing can change our whole feeling about someone, just like about Snape, right? It's review at the end. So we hated him for the most of the series, and then it's only take one line always. And then we just like completely fell over for him, right? So, and it's similar like that to our pattern. It was just like, it's only need to take one decision or like one different perspective to swap our whole belief about. And that make uh, our judgment change. And when our judgment change, our behavior change and our life change according to that also. So- I love that so much. Yeah, so it's all like a domino effect. So yeah. and quite often we need someone else to point us in the right direction. Yes. We do yes. need coaches, you know, we do need like look at your teacher, how how much they helped you. You know, yes. we think that we can do it all on our own, but if we could have, we wouldn't have been in that situation. So I, we need to learn from others as well. I think really it's really helpful because when we stuck in like a thought cycle. Mm -hmm. is so subconscious and it's so ingrained in us it's very difficult to break out it's almost like impossible if we we don't know what we don't know if we yeah. cannot see it then we cannot see it to get out of it you know like if you don't even like, recognize it yeah we never recognize it like i for example like i um at the time in vietnam like we never use credit card you know i don't even know what that is so there would be no way I understand how to do it, like how to do any of it, like credit card, check or whatever, until we came to the US and get exposed to a lot of things. So like, you simply don't know what you don't know, you know, and all of your experience is valid because it happened to you in personal, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's true. Doesn't necessarily mean like what we, what we take from it. Yeah, what we take, what we think that we learn from it it's not necessarily the truth of it. So yes. um, very simple. Like just like when we think we make a mistake and we would like, oh my God, I'm a terrible being. I'm just going to deserve like unhappiness for life. Then we feel that way. And it's valid of like of all the challenges that we went through. But that doesn't mean it's true. Uh, it doesn't mean that it's going to repeat. Um, but usually if we don't learn the lesson, we tend to make the same behavior, then it's repeating. It's not any different. Yeah. It's, it's repeating and it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy because like, oh, it's going to happen like that again. We're not going to get it. Yeah. I'm going to be failing and this kind of stuff. And it's really going to happen that way because we're making the same behavior. We're making it feels comfortable. Behavior. It's something yeah. we know. Yeah. And we don't know anything better. And then um, so that's why it's important to, to get a fresh perspective. 
And you usually don't get it with your friends and with your family. You usually get it with a mentor. Uh, because friend and family, as much as they love you, <laughs> they also have kind of similar upbringing with you. Yeah. Because there's a reason that you connect with someone so well because like um, you have kind of same opinions about things. So thinking kind of be very the same way. So their way of thinking also very similar with yours. It's and so true. I'm glad you brought that up because you need somebody to challenge you. Somebody yeah. who's not in your circle, for sure. Yeah. You might not, you might not, um, like you both can, uh, this, uh, like, you know, like if for something like similar, like let's say a relationship, right? Let's say you discuss about your uh, intimate relationship with your friend and with your uh, family, they will be advocating for you, yes. But they cannot tell you if your relationship is healthy or not, unless like something like major obvious. But if something like just feelings, just about vague emotional, they really don't know. They really yeah. can't. But if they don't advocate for you, then you're instantly hurt too. Because yeah, 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 exactly. Well, you always want them to advocate for you, but you cannot count on their opinion to make a decision. And yes, I love you. a lot of us do that. <laughs> a lot of us do that. Which is like, um, especially true for, yeah, I think it's true for both men and women. But like, especially it's much harder for women because not only we have that cultural expectation, but like we have like a lot of like generational wounds. So like our women, like our mothers and our grandmothers always passing down like, okay, like in a relationship, the woman needs to be more forgiving, more patient. We need to be, you know, more meek and stuff like that. Undertones, yes. And those uh, might not be true. And they get all of that advice from their own experience. Mm -hmm. But their own experience might not be great either. You know, they might not have a great relationship either. But here yes. they expect you on how to have a good relationship when they like themselves don't have a good relationship either. So like, it's familiar. Lot, yeah. So a lot of those wisdom are not true wisdom. They are just being passed down in generation and nobody stopped to check back to see whether those true or not. Um, so that's why like, that's why there's a caution to actually go with a mentor instead mm -hmm. because they, um, if you get nothing out of it, at least you have a fresh perspective. Like, it's kind of open your mind a little bit. <laughs> no, you need that. And when you can see a different that, reality. Yes. And when you're in that situation, you don't know you need that. So you need to, you know, somebody needs yeah. to show you. No, for sure. What? So, okay. I know that you feel that, uh, like, when you had your breakup, right? So what was it about the breakup that you mm -hmm. think is a great opportunity for us to start our personal growth? So um, my breakup was very intentional um, because I initiated it. And even still, it was very painful for me, myself. Yes. Um, and then when I started working with a lot of people, uh, most of them would tend to find me after they have a breakup or divorce. And it was very much more worse than my situation. Uh, what I found out is, regardless of who initiated a uh, breakup or divorce, um, it's very, it's a painful experience. It's unavoidable. Um, and and one, one interesting tidbit that I feel like uh, we like, this is like the secret, right? I like, I think the woman always delay the breakup, like much, much, much longer. Like the relationship for them is over, but take them months or actually years to actually officially end it. Why do you think that is? To officially end it. <laughs> um, so first is women tend to be more aware of their emotions. It's just uh, how we are very much more in touch with our emotions. And uh, men have their, their traumas. They don't have a lot of, they're not very in touch with their emotion because they are not supposed to as boys, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so women have that much more in touch with their emotions. So they kind of know like, okay, it's probably not working out. Um, but women are people pleasing and we're so used to, we don't want to hurt anybody. <laughs> yes, yeah, sacrifice. And we just feel so much guilty <laughs> if our decision affects negatively somebody else. Um, even though it might not be negative in the long run, it might be just temporary discomfort. 
but we just very, very shied away from making the decision. We can't even say no. Like a lot of times it's hard for us to say no, much less like, this is not working for me. A lot of people stay. That's why a lot of people stay. It takes courage, you know? It really takes a lot of courage. And also sometimes it's just circumstances. Um, like some people, yeah, um, no judgment that, you know, like a lot of people need to be in a relationship just for um, economic, you know, circumstances. Uh, why that not ideal? But, you know, emotionally, we know emotionally the woman now um and it really takes courage it really takes courage to find a different way to actually face it and live true to ourselves live very honestly to ourselves mm -hmm. like if we don't feel like it then yeah we need to teach that because you know some people are in relationships for the mere fact unhappy ones and unhealthy ones because they are lonely you know like what you were saying earlier but you become more lonely yes in a lonely relationship Yes, uh, that's what I recognize. Um, so that was my experience because even when I was, um, you know, check all the boxes and get into a relationship, even with a nice guy, um, you cannot run away from it. Loneliness would always catch up to you. You cannot, you cannot, you can never run away from yourself. It's, it's the absolutely true. So what happened no one else is- else can make you happy. You have to find it yourself. No, and so like even with me, when I thought I was clever and packed my schedule to have zero pay space for a long, eventually, um, it came out. Eventually, I just feel lonely in relationship. Eventually, even when I was still hanging out with my then fiance, even though even like we were hanging out, we socialize with friends, I just can't. I just still feel lonely. Um, but you know, it's because loneliness has nothing to do with if you're alone or not. No, it does not. And that was what I would recognize that. I think um, I start making like demand mm -hmm. of my then fiance, like you need to spend more time with me and quality time and stuff like that. And like, we already spent all the free time together. I don't know when you think we're gonna have more time together. And I'm like, well, okay, well, I want you, you know, I want us to um, stay up until the sunrise and talk about anything and everything. And he would just look at me like, you already know everything about me. I, I don't know what else to talk about. They were like, this is not who I'm looking for. I want somebody to talk about. But, but even if you find that person, it's- Yeah, it would just, it was usually, it took me a long time to recognize that I was so lonely, even in relationship, that all of that unhappiness just like, spill out. And I would start like getting mad and angry at the other person because they didn't make me happy. Like they need to so do something. common, so <laughs> common, but I don't think, the, I don't think many people realize it until. Yeah. You know, and it's, um, hard to see. it's hard to see when you're. It's really hard to absolutely. see. Absolutely. Very subtle. Um, and also like, we're just not brought up for that. We always, especially for girl, like just look at all this Disney movie. Like when you meet your friend Charming, everything is good. Happily ever after. There's not, what's wrong with you? Wrong. Yeah nothing gonna go wrong and like that's where everything go wrong you know you counting your whole life happiness on another person for something outside of you which is bullshit <laughs> it's absolutely absolutely not true um that's why i'm but, glad we're talking about it because i think they need to teach that more in school yeah you know? and so breakup in that sense um because of the pain is specifically because of the pain that you cannot avoid it is break you raw open. You have no, regardless of what coping mechanism you pick, whether wine, alcohol, or Netflix, or rebound relationship, you will still have that pain. Mm. And that pain make you much more honest. And that mm. that is a window of opportunity for you to choose. Your pain you makes you that more honest. I love that so much. I'm going to quote you on that because, you know, I think you should use that as your quote because that's really um, very deep. Yeah, your pain makes you raw and very honest. Like, no matter what, you cannot avoid it. Yeah, and you, I like that. You cannot cope with it. Like, regardless of what you do, you can still feel the pain. Mm. And that is an opportunity for us to make a decision. Either you, we continue coping and just move on as fast as we can, or mm. we return to our story and face it and make the choice to go 
inner healing. So usually you break up in any kind of pain or challenging in our life are a window for us to make the choice to go within, to face ourselves. Like what is it that we're so miserable? miserable? And usually even, you know, biologically, if we have some kind of pain, you know, we break our skin. If we break our bone, it's painful because it's signifying there's something wrong that we need to pay attention to it. So when we go through those kind of pain, yes, it's, you know, like something ending is always painful. That's a given. But also it's something like, you know, it's kind of break open our sword and our shell to show us like, maybe something not working also. Like, why don't you take a look? You know, like- Opportunity for change right there. Right, absolutely. Like, why you take a look? Why don't you take a look the whole thing, you know, to check. And uh, so that is a great opportunity for, for that. And also pain make people um, more honest, but more vulnerable. So they, it's, it's more open to, um, more open to change. Uh, So like, I think one of the wisdom in the Native American, uh, they say people that go into grief when they was losing a loved one, they are very respected uh, as some, somebody in that grieving period, Mm -hmm. as someone that's very wise, because they are, in a way, they are much more in touch with the other side that wish much more in touch with their spiritual side. So their wisdom are very raw. And they are very rever uh, for those kind of wisdom that available in that period of grief because of the pain that make them just so much more open. Yeah, is yes, and you start to feel things you've never felt before. Just it just happens, and you yeah. start to question life, and you start to question all these things. Yeah, and that is a very further ground to grow into the the version of yourself, right? Mm-hmm. To the best version of yourself. To to who you are always meant to be, to who your soul wants. I love that so much. Thank you so much for sharing yeah. that. And because, yes, so- we all have pain, but there is healing. You know, when you allow yourself to be open about how much you're hurting, there's room for for healing for sure. Yes, and uh, I think that's I think that's why I like the kind of work I do because I I tend to hold people hand like okay you're not alone in this you know like I know it's you very sound possible. like you'd be great at it you'd be <laughs> a great coach honestly but like um if, if if you think about like traditional coaching that I'm totally terrible at it because like traditional coaching is like you just ask people questions and have people come up with the answer I'm like much more hands on <laughs> like okay here's the answer so like i give you the answer you don't have to brew too long about it because you tend to let's get on. It. let's get started <laughs> but um i would like pull people through like okay so i know it's very painful but but don't reject it like that's our first instinct and that also like kind of our habit when the pain comes up but we're just like no, this is so uncomfortable. We don't want to deal with it. We just want to numb it and we just want to deal with it. Uh, but like, no, 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 just, just just sit with it. Like, I know it sucks, but hey, if, like, if you really think about, let's say whether you, you know, if you like roller coaster or, you know, if you read a book, you kind of get the low point of roller coaster or you need to get through like the very antsy chapter, you know, mm-hmm. on the on the book to actually, to actually appreciate it, to actually... Yes to actually understand and have those kind of impact. Um, so your growth, it's like growing pain. You need that kind of pain. Yeah, um, life life isn't really all it's meant to be without the sadness and without the difficult parts because you can't appreciate that. No, you can't. And, um, and so you true. always tend to, and also the pain also makes you much more compassionate. Mm. Like, um, yes, and empathetic too, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not only is break you open, like it's help yourself if you choose to, but you also, so like because, so let's say, um, so this is true for me. So before, when I was in Vietnam, I was, you know, very happy kid, whatever. Um, but I was very arrogant. Like I was, you know, don't, don't really have, um, I, I think I was compassionate, but that not to like, the point. I'm very arrogant. Like I tend to look down on other people. Um, Especially people that make mistakes because okay. I was like, because You're high I, achiever, yeah, yeah like, I'm high achiever and I have very high moral code. I'm like, how can you do that? You know, like, how can you do such a thing? Like, be true. You're also very young, but yeah. yeah. 
but this pain in your experience make you so much more human and oh, so much I love that. Than other people and uh it take you hopefully it take out of your judgment because when you look at others you're like oh well they deserve what happened to them because you know they suck or something like that but it's actually like okay you know what we don't know maybe we can make the kind of mistake too and you know i mean like i mean <laughs> maybe they're not that terrible you know it's just like you don't know and it just make you just that pain make you much more human and much more related easier to understand other people and make you and that make you a better person the, the pain make you more compassionate and make you kinder to other people because they could be going through the very same pain that you do and i think that's connected that's what makes you a good coach <laughs> honestly because the last person like i would want to go and see is somebody who's never felt that yeah like you can't i know you can read it in a book and you can learn all the things and you know there are coaches who don't have that experience have the very wise and i'm not saying um that they don't know what they're doing but when if i can find someone who has been there even if the stories are not the same the stories are always different you're never going to find someone with the exact same story and that's okay but as long as they have that experience and empathy and like you were saying if you're looking at the traditional sense of the word then you would be a terrible coach but you know what when you were saying what you do do as a coach i could just tell she just wants to help people whether she gives them the answer or she doesn't she just really wants them to see the other side and that's what i love so much yeah my idea like my whole wish of starting the whole thing was to have people eventually have that kind of sense of in the peace in themselves so even in chaos even everything around them is going down in you know in burning down in ashes they can have that foundation that they can feel that inner sense of peace not because you know like everything is peaceful but they know that they know themselves the foundation is there right yeah, they, they, they still love themselves through all the horrible stuff yeah they're not lost mm. the feeling of not being lost of not very like we don't know who we are anymore we just go with the flow but like a sense of not being lost that bring peace and I, that's why i tell a lot of my uh, client like clarity bring peace the moment you understand something that immediately give you the peace of mind you know so if you true. understand it just like i think it's just real i think it's normal for human like we like to know we, like, that's why we have weather forecast how do we have, it's not even suddenly like but if we know tomorrow gonna snow we if you really have that peace of mind, okay, you know, tomorrow, yeah, Miss no, you know, like, we have that kind of peace of mind. So that's clarity, give us that. So it that's why- Prepare I, us, prepare us for more yeah, things. Prepare. So my goal is a way, work with people that they develop the strong foundation in themselves and build that kind of solid relationship with themselves. So they have that such confidence that they can go and face anything in their life. You know, whether if they want, you know, whether they want a beautiful, happily ever after relationship, they can do that um, in the healthy way, in the correct way, mm. or, you know, they want to achieve whatever, you know, whatever grander purpose, you know, find a cure to cancer or whatever. I always want them to have a strong foundation in themselves because when they need life setback or whatever, they can do with it, you know? We, Good. Hmm. Good yeah. question. Sorry, Tiffany. Um, should people, do different people experience different uh, time lengths, like lengths of how long it takes them to, to have their, their transformations? Absolutely. So I would think depending on the person themselves, I don't think there would be a specific time, right? So Absolutely. People know. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, it depends on two things. I mean, three things, basically. So first thing is going to be their temperament, mm. uh, how open they are and how moldable they are. Um, so it's not like, it's not like a high achiever thing. It's not like, um, I think we got trained because from our schooling and from our working environment, if you work in corporate, like if you do ABC, you got to get X, Y, Z, you know, like it doesn't work like that for inner work, for spiritual healing, for your healing journey. Healing journey is a very spiral journey. Something you feel like you've done it and you deal with it. It can come up again years later. Um, it's just on a different level. So depend on your uh, temperament, um, 
if you kind of uh, relax a little bit, not too hardcore, it tends to be better. Um, and so it tends to be a temperament. If you get frustrated so easily, so it's going to make you don't fight it. It's a little, yeah, it's, it's okay. going to be much more longer. Um, the second thing, it depends on their uh, personal um, experience. So each, so each of us have different life. And we all going to have different baggage with from our upbringing and different kind of trauma. And so sometimes some people can have a lot more wounds to heal compared to others. So so depend on our own emotional baggage and our own patterns, how how deeply sad it is or how many unhealthy patterns we have. Um, some people have a few, some people have more, so, you know, so depend on that. And the third one, this one is a little bit more woo-woo, is also depending on your karma. <laughs> so one of the things is your karma. Um, uh, you know, when the timeline shifts and something like that. Um, the good thing is you do, uh, you do shift it. You do, you do shift it. Like once your end of view change, like when you, your view about the world change, mm -hmm. the world will change to match your, to match your belief. Like it will, it will change. Like, um, if you're saying like, oh my God, I'm always attract loser, then you really will attract loser. <laughs> so, so it will. Yes, it's, it's just a simple thing. Like even if you're outside and you're like, you know, you're looking to buy a Toyota and all of a sudden, because you're thinking about it, every car you see is a Toyota that's going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Your, your view about the word, especially the subconscious one, especially the one that, you know, like when we, it's a very simple one, like you think like, oh my God, uh, the woman had to be, you know, like, this is very common for women, like, oh my god, I have to be, like, super hot, uh, I have to be young and have this sexy body, and I have to be, like, cooking every day, and cleaning every day, and be, like, a stellar housewife to get, like, amazing guide or whatever, right? Um, so usually those kind of things, you will kind of, your world will shift into, and you're gonna see all the example of people have to be exactly like that to make it work. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's not really true. So if you shift it, if you shift your view, um, the word will change to match yours. And that, yeah, and that's absolutely true. Um, so my, that. Uh, yeah, 100%. So, that, so that part of the karma, so like once you kind of resolve some of the karmic thing, um, you change. Um, so that's not, so I think my client went from, I have like, I kind of went from like, divorce and lost everything like house dogs everything <laughs> terrible um and also that that's his job also <laughs> at the end of the divorce like lost everything um but eventually it took him um, a year and a half he got married to the love of his life but he, really? could never, he could never thought that he got he, he was like when he first met me he was like I would never get married again. One season off, this is terrible. No, not recommend at all. And they're like, okay, we're like, okay, so hear me out. Let, let's pain. They haven't seen the other side yet. Yeah, but then, um, but what he truly wanted was, you know, a family. And then, uh, yeah, a year and a half later, he married. And then now he's having the second kid. Um, so it was it was nice to see that. And then he, he yeah. got his new job and whatever also. So it was good. Nice to see so, that. Yeah. You really change, but it really depends. So, like for him, it only took him like a year and a half and two years. But for I know that for other my clients, it took like three years, few more years. You know, so it's all depend on how uh, strong we can take. Um, the good thing about you know if high achiever is like they uh, they must more focus. So like if it's healthy action, they really do it. Um, so that's why sometimes the eight personalities work kind of well in that part, um, but not so great when they really too focus on something, then it's just like pushing too much. That's just too much force and I'm not good either. But, yeah, but if you kind of leaning toward like the B personality, very flow and very soft, it's very good for you to open and start the new thing, but it lacks a little bit discipline. Like mm. it, it's gonna be a habit and it will require a certain kind of discipline if you want uh, a faster result, you know, like right. if, you, if you really want. So the reason that make your, if you want your world to change and when you start this thing, mm -hmm. you got to go into the inner healing work with two things. First, got to be conviction. Like 
You have to know, <laughs> even though like right now it doesn't seem like it, but you have to know that it is working. You know, like mm-hmm. it takes time to build. There, hang in there. But hang in there. Like, um, it's really time to do it. You know, so like you're gonna lay down the foundation first. You know, but before the foundation, you gotta kind of like destroy the old building first because it's rotting. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then you have to build a strong foundation and then it's going to take time to build up the floor, you know, so it's kind yes, of like- because it, it didn't take, you know, two days for you to feel that all those things, it yes. took a decade. So it's going to take you at least a few years to exactly don't stop. Be patient. Don't stop. <laughs> yeah, but There are, you know, like there are definitely different things that you can feel much more faster. Like, you know, like some kind of clarity about yourself and your confidence. Those can take, you know, like, some people take weeks, some people take months. So you can shift it rapidly. But mm-hmm. if you're thinking, oh, okay, I've got to work with a code. I've got to meet my, the love of my life in three months. That's not going to work. <laughs> that's not going to work. <laughs> so like, uh, in fact, not- don't do that. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. That's, uh, that's, that's not good. If, you, if anybody promise you like, okay, in six months, you're going to making seven figures. You're going to become a millionaire and you're going to meet the love of your life. No. Yeah, it's whole shit. <laughs> Okay, no, don't believe it. Um, that's not healthy. That's not correct way. No. Just um, like you can't lose a hundred pounds overnight. It doesn't work. No, you you probably be admitted to the ER if you do that. <laughs> don't do that. Um, so yeah, but I would say that if anyone wants to find uh, authentic mentor or teacher or coach. Um, there are only two things. First, you want to make sure that the mentor or the coach that you're working with are authentic. And um, sometimes it's hard to tell whether they're authentic or not, um, because sometimes it takes time for the truth to come out. So, so, um, so that's why, like, I, I guess, like, I hope people are authentic, but, you know, um, but the, the second way is uh, the second thing that's very important and is much easier for people to do is uh, resonance. Like, you need to resonate with that person teaching style or their message and stuff like that. And um, as a woman too, don't feel bad saying we're not a good match. Yes, yes. We're not afraid to say no. Do not wait a year into your therapy, a year into your coaching, a year into your relationship with this person because you're only hurting yourself. Yes, yes, yes. I, I turned out a lot of people because I was like, um, I use dark humor. It just a professional hazard in the hair care. I just use dark humor and I also curse. So like I use drop like F off like a lot. And like I'm not I'm not, you know, not that crazy spiritual. So like uh, you know, so like I do that. Um so you, you know, like you have to take give and take, but like you really need to resonate with someone. Um I would say most uh, I would say most of if not all of authentic spiritual teacher teaching the same message about loving yourself about fighting yourself and stuff like that. Um, you just gotta find one that um, resonate with you. Just like you might have a lot of math teacher or whoever teacher teaching the same subject, but you're gonna have one favorite. And- You will have a connection for sure. Because of the connection. So find the that. person- I mean, you yeah. need that because you're talking about such deep things. Yes, yes. You know? And you don't want to, you go to a coach because you don't want to suppress anymore. You don't want to hide anymore. So if you're not comfortable with the person that you've hired or that's helping you, you're just going to be doing more of the same thing. Exactly. Exactly. Especially if you do any kind of healing work with a mentor or coach, be prepared to share it, to share your darkest Mm. moment in your life. Your deepest. Just find somebody else. And you cannot heal if you cannot say it. You give, you cannot open to your coach or your therapist. Yeah, it's important. So, um, yeah, resonance is really good. Um, so that you know, whether you whoever you choose to work with, be sure that at least they're authentic. You know, like don't bite into like this very grain promise. That's not not good. Yep. <laughs> That's not good. Um, that you should not not authentic, but resonate um make sure you resonate with that person's style of teaching um and their message that's it yeah thank you so much like is there anything that we didn't talk about that you wanted to you know any takeaways any quick little things that people can start to do just to 
you know, even you've said so much already, so many wonderful things, you know, you've, you've given us this roadmap already of all these things that you can do and all these steps. But if somebody, I don't know, like, I know that a lot of times, depending on what's going on around us, we tend to um, judge ourselves based on that. Like, for example, if when you went back to when you were 16, the fact that people maybe were laughing or did not communicate with you because they didn't know how or were doing things. It changed how you felt about yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, you yeah. shouldn't allow that to happen. Is, um, I would say this, um, anything that we say shouldn't, it doesn't matter because we feel it anyway. Mm. <laughs> so, but um, you should know that your perception about yourself, like how you feel about yourself is the most important mm. compared to anybody else. Um, because those, I think I love this saying from Dr. Seuss, like the people that matter, they don't mind. And the people that mind, they don't matter. So mm -hmm. um, before you care about other people's opinions, care about yourself first. And their opinions, remember like, if your opinion can be changed, their opinion can also be changed. Yes, thank you. I love that so much. Yeah. And yes, that's so wise. I love the way you think. I, I really do. I, I love it. All makes sense to me. Like, it's just like, yes, you know, and it's the way that you explain things. I so can, I can connect with you that way. That's beautiful. Yeah. And um, remember, like, people change all the time. We change every day. We're not the same person we are 15 minutes ago, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so don't, um, especially things from the past are not the same in the present. So don't, don't get stuck in the past too much. Uh, but what I want to leave with everyone is I want everyone to um, be um, brutally honest with yourself, even though it's very painful, just the in denial really delay a lot of things. The in denial yeah. part really delay a lot of things. So be brutally honest with yourself because you will never, you never be able to run away from yourself, no matter how far you run. Like I run across the globe, but I still can't run away from myself. So yes. don't think about it. Um, be brutally honest with yourself, and that takes courage. So, and you have more courage than you think. You have more courage. You're so and, inspirational. Oh my goodness, I love this so much. Um, and I, I didn't have this personal experience, but I want to let everybody know that, especially for women, when you take that courage leap to help heal yourself, you're healing not only yourself, but your whole generation. Um, and so your children don't have to do that work. Mm. So because you heal that wound, you don't pass it on that wound to I others. I so believe that so and much. Your future generation gonna thank you for that because you're healing them. <laughs> By healing yourself, you're healing other people. It's and so true, yes. Yes, and not only, so not only you affecting the future, you healing the future, you also healing the past because your mom and your grandmother are gonna be thanking you. Like, yes, thank you for breaking the cycle, changing the world. Yes, so it's all start with you. I've seen it. I've seen mothers who, um, oh, who have been, and I was one of them. You know, who's depressed and anxious, and once you start to heal, the whole family heals. Yes. Yes, the whole and family. The whole village. And then, the, you know, it's, it's beautiful. It's really a, the whole lineage thing. And it's very true. Like, there is scientific fact about it. So just like a quick geek, <laughs> a quick geek fact that, um, so scientifically, like, uh, they found that um, grandchildren of Holocaust, oh. survived, um, even though they never met their grandparents and they never experienced the Holocaust themselves, but they still have PTSD wow. because it's really passed on to your gene and to your subconscious and things like that. So that's what we call like generational wounds. So this really does happen. Like there's trauma that can pass down generation. Mm. So if you heal it, you know, because that gene change because of the traumatic happen. So if you yeah. heal it, you not only heal it yourself, you heal your past generation and your future generation. So it's true. It actually does happen so this is not just a woo okay this is a side effect so 
uh, have the courage to do it. Uh, we can do it. And um, last thing is just like have curiosity. And I think um, everyone tends to be so afraid of making the mistake or am I doing the right thing? Am I doing it right? Am I progressing the right way or whatever? Uh, don't worry about it. You, everybody have their own timeline. You know, don't, everybody is different. You know, everybody have different paths. Thank goodness. Thank goodness we're all different. So, so the, you don't have to catch up with anybody and you don't have to slow down or speed up or whatever. Um, so have that natural curiosity and to explore things, right? Um, so it's especially come up because I use tarot. Um, I love tarot. And um, it's, it's a, like it's a very very um different experience like in vietnam like everybody loves spirituality so like everybody was so into it I'm like yes so that's so cool in the u.s you have like a portion of people I'm like that's evil work and whatever <laughs> like, okay whatever but <laughs> i was just trying to say like have that curiosity of this childlike curiosity whatever you like whether it's weird or not like if you like pole dancing or whatever go explore it like follow yeah. your joy and just have that natural curiosity and yeah. Do yeah. Things. so don't be afraid don't be afraid to try something you think that is silly or is weird and people are going to judge you or whatever um you never know you you might try it and you don't have to stick with it i, I feel like people are afraid especially for high achievers they're like okay if i decide that i want to try this instrument music instrument i'm going to stick with that music pop or all that i'm like you can change you know like but you might find the one thing that makes you feel so good, you know? Yeah, what a you, shame if you never, you've never, you know, experimented. And yes, experiment it. I waste a lot of money and a lot of time experimenting with a lot of things that I just, <laughs> just never worked out. But it was a fun experience in the yes. end. That's just curiosity, you know, like just go explore it. Um, sometimes we, um, sometimes we suppress that as a children, as a child. Uh, because our parents like don't play that it's dirty or something like that like we get stopped a lot of that too so sometimes we're afraid to try a lot of things but um but we adore now you make the rules so <laughs> it's okay to be uncomfortable it can take you to a lot of wonderful places a lot of wonderful places. yes oh you're amazing i love you so much so, where can we uh where can we find you can you tell us yeah, so um, people find me the uh, best way is to connect with me on my website, spunkyspiritualist.com. And um, I only have Facebook. I don't have any other social media. So. Okay. <laughs> so that's a Facebook. Um, I do have one workshop coming up for, um, that's going to be my first workshop for um, on July 6th for relationship, where I'm going through to give you the basic foundation that what are important for relationship or the important quality and how you can cultivate it so like the complete basic so like you can take it and go get your happily ever after <laughs> yourself so that's what i have going on but um everything just you can only connect with me on spiritual spunky spiritual.com i have a great free guide that you guys can get is uh oh, great. seven steps to move on when things don't work out so that's what really help with the and i'll put all the links in the notes and everything so yeah everything. so very easy spaghetti.com and you can find all the, all the information on there no that will be so great thank you it was such an honor to to have you here and I, I really love the way you explained everything and went through everything i think it's going to really help people today thank you if any questions please don't hesitate to send me an email and you know I'm so happy that you didn't give up on yourself. And I'm so happy that you found all these wonderful things that helped you and you were open and your friend and those moments created all this coaching and all this happiness for you. So I'm so glad that, you know, things are the way that they are for you. Oh, thank you. And I believe that you too, because, you know, you, you're starting all these, like helping a lot of other people just starting from your own experience. So just to show like each of us are much more amazing than we think we are. And when we start, it's okay yeah. to, it's okay to um, feel happy about that. Yeah. And it is something amazing and everybody's happy about it. Like you are more amazing than you are, than you think you are. And when you start healing, 
you are even become more amazing and you help so many other people you know like like i think my story is very ordinary and nothing extra but but that's why i here i'm here you know talking to you and um other people find hope with it and you never know your story also like that too so don't ever give up on yourself thank you that's a beautiful beautiful message thank you so much thank you thank you for tuning in to this week's episode if you enjoyed what you heard please subscribe or leave a review see you next week on the giving starts with you podcast